Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the hotel management system series using Django. In this one, we will go ahead and start working with making payments using PayPal. That is what we will be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. Do consider dropping a like and also subscribing as it really mean the world to me. So let's get started. Now I will start off by opening up my code editor and um, over here. I can now close up all this and open out only the checkout HTML page all the way at the bottom. I already have the PayPal CDN imported for you. You could please pass this in and also pass this one in for the jQuery and also this for Stripe. We haven't started working with Stripe. When we start, I will show you how to work with this. All we need now is just this one and the jQuery. Okay. And right now you can see that the client ID is set to test pretty much because we are still in test mode. As soon as you want to go live, please change this test over here to your real client ID. It's okay if you pass in your client ID here and others can see it. It's totally okay. It's not the same as secret key. It's a public key, which means other people should be able to see it and also should go wrong. Making payments with PayPal is actually easy compared to what's almost everyone thinks that it will be difficult, it will be complex, you have to write a lot of code, a lot of code to perform this operation. But no, you don't have to do that. The first thing you will do is firstly start off by defining your variables. I'll say let's booking total be equal to booking underscore total. Then down here, if you log booking total, you can clearly see, let me make sure um, let me make sure that my code, hmm. please hold on. Let me refresh my checkout page to make sure. Yeah, there you go. We don't have any bug here. So after you, you've done this, then log booking total and let's open up our console because whenever you're working with JavaScript, you should rely on the console to see informations. All right, there you go. This is opened up, but we seem not to be able to see our booking total. So booking dot total, not underscore total. Okay. Then over here, we logged this. So reload this. And can you see the booking total being printed over here now, which is exactly what we have over here. So now that we have gotten this, I also need to get a couple more. For example, I need the booking ID and I also need the success ID. All right. So this one should be booking dot success ID and this one should be booking dot booking ID. You could go ahead and log these if you want to do that. Let me pretty much log them as fast as I can over here and let's reload this. Okay. Can you see this and this? Let me see. Do we have anything like success ID in the model hotel for class booking? All right. It's success ID like that. Booking that success ID, but it seems there wasn't anything passed into this one's success ID. Let's see. See, it's success ID is blank. That is why we were not able to see anything. And that is because success ID should be automatically filled in and not just the blank character field. So please take this and put it in the success ID. And that means you need to rerun, make migration, migrate and run server. Our unique constraints failed. Okay. For now, let's remove the unique from the success ID. Then run, make migration, migrate and run server again. Okay. It keeps showing unique constraints field. What I will do is open up my migrations and delete this one that alters the booking success ID. All right. So after doing that over here, I want to pass in null can be true and also blank can be true. That is because initially we have some items in the model that don't have a success ID. So now run, make migrations, run my grids, run server. Let's see what's happening. Um, reload this. Hmm. How about I try adding a new booking? See, now we have something showing up in the success ID. That is cool. So now you could 
just fill in anything you want for now, just for the sake of the tutorial now. And um, let me get back, open this one up. Payment status should still be pending and I'll fill this in. That shouldn't be filled in manually, it will be filled in automatically, but it's just because of the way we have the code looking now. So please change this to short UUID, pass in null true, blank true, run your migrate, make migration and migrate. And now when you try adding a new booking, see it should be automatically pre-filled for you. So after we've done these two things back in the checkouts, we can now reload this page and see that a success ID shows up. That is really cool. So after we've done these two things, I will call paypal.buttons, paypal.buttons, and I'm able to use this paypal.buttons because we have imported this, okay? So paypal.buttons, and what do I want to do? Let me start off by creating a new order. And here I will define a function that should take two parameters, data and actions. And over here, we pretty much need to return actions dot order dot create, which pretty much means we are trying to create a new order. And it takes in a couple of um, attributes. First one is purchase, purchase units, which in an array or in a dictionary array, we will pass in the amount that we want to pay for. And in the dictionary, pass in the value and Remember, it's saved in booking total. All right. So after you've done this, that's pretty much it for creating a new order with the total amount that you're willing to pay for. And after you've done this for the create order, as soon as the order gets approved, I want to check on approve. On approve, create a new function. This function should take data and actions. And over here, we should return actions dot order dot capture. I got all this from the PayPal documentation. I will show you documentation so you can also make reference to it and understand what this code does. So in here, I'm creating a new function that will take a parameter details, which will pretty much help us get the details from the response that was sent after the payment has been made. So what I will pretty much do is for now, let me just log details. Okay. So log detail and that's pretty much it for now. Over here at the bottom, say dot render. And what do I want to render? I will have a, a div called PayPal um, button container. So let's create a new div with an ID PayPal button container just down here this is the one for flutter wave right i will comment out the flutter wave for now and over here i want to create a new div that we have an id of this okay so now that we have done this that is pretty much what we want let's reload this page and see what we have now you can see that we clearly have paypal and credit card um page showing up over here that is it so as soon as we click on this PayPal, you can see that it loads up the PayPal page and it shows this blank about page. If you're getting this error, the best way to fix this error is to add one simple line of code in your settings PY. In your settings PY, let me locate my settings PY real quick. Below the allowed hosting, add this code, secure underscore cross underscore origin underscore opener underscore policy then passing same origin allow pop-ups so that you will not be able to get this bug again that pops up whenever your page reloads okay so that should be it let me reload this page again and let's try that out so the page reloads we hit paypal see the bug is gone it just opens up your paypal page all right so I know a lot of people usually get that error. That is the very, very simple line of code to fix it in your settings PY. Okay. Now I will go ahead and log in and actually try making a payment. So I will complete purchase. And let me take a close look at my at this. Can you see that it returns some data here? The details returned completed. Can you see? And can you also see that it shows um, the payment intent is capture the purchase units 
and the ID of the payment. So that's pretty much it. The payment with PayPal is going through. Very, very easy. So now we can say if over here in the checkout, we can now say something like if detail dot status is equal to completed. So let me grab this. If it's equal to completed, that is when we want to go ahead and redirect. Okay, this code seems not to be, oh, in that off. Then over here, we will redirect to the success page. And the success page, how is it going to look? For now, we don't have that page, but it will be like this, Windows dot location dot href should be equal to slash success slash or instead of doing this let's use backtick so that we can actually call variables in here so i'll say slash success slash then we want to append the booking id that one is compulsory and um, i also want to append the if you want you can append the payer id that one is up to you but I want to append the and success success ID should be equal to then let's append the success ID and payer underscore ID should be equal to and let's append the payer ID that should be details.id okay look at it over here id and if you want you can also append the status let's append the status the payment status so i will say status should be details dot status there you go so with all this now payments will be going through as expected and for now that's pretty much everything that we need let's also append the booking to sell so we use that to pretty much check if the total is the same thing as the one that should be paid for or if it was manipulated in a way all right so details dot instead of details dot total just passing booking total all right and over here this should be booking total so what we are pretty much doing over here now is string concatenation in case you don't know we want to return back to this page and this is all the items that should be appended in the url we are using this to grab dynamic data, as you can see. So let's try out the payments one more time and see if everything goes through as expected. Just reload this page and hit the PayPal button. Then I will complete my purchase. And there you go. See, it redirects back to success with the booking ID with a success okay this one needs to change this booking id the success should be success oh there you go that's the success id the payer id is this one the status is completed the booking total is this so these are the informations that i will use to actually verify if the payment was went through as expected if for any reason there was payment manipulation i will query this payment against whichever one exist in the database to see if it went true or not that's pretty much it for the tutorial but before i end it off i want you guys to know that i'll keep looking for more better ways to actually make the paypal payments even more secured and as soon as i get them i will keep updating the tutorial for you guys if you have the source code i will also keep updating the source code for you guys also so that will be it for this tutorial as you can see paypal payments now goes through as expected we don't have the success page so for you to see page not found is actually okay when we create the success page you should not see this any longer in the next one we will go ahead and start working with stripe creating stripe checkout session and also working with stripe here on the front end and after that i believe we should be done with payment then we will start creating the payment success page that will be it for the tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new don't be sure to drop a like consider subscribing as you really mean the world to me and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, my love, peace out.